paints and we're going to spend a little bit of time doing thumbnail sketches. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, why do I need to do thumbnail sketches? We've got the reference photo. Exactly. That's what it is. It's a reference photo, which means you don't necessarily, and I think it's better to use that as a reference and compose a painting from that reference. Okay. Certainly if you want, you totally can paint that reference photo verbatim, but I think you're gonna learn more if you learn how to compose from that, okay? So I'm just gonna start out with some colored pencils. And the way I like to get started with thumbnails is I draw literal rectangles. This is really handy, guys, because if you draw a literal rectangle, it makes you really conscious of the edges and also the corners of the page. Because a lot of the time, actually, what I see people do, they'll do something like this. They'll have a sheet of paper and they'll say, oh, I'm doing thumbnails, so let me just do this. How many of you guys did that? Confess. <laughs> This is not a good idea, okay? This is not good because now the compositions are going to bleed into each other and you're not going to see the composition very clearly. So this very simple step of drawing literal rectangles is a really critical part of doing strong thumbnail sketches. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I wanna have four sketches that represent the still life in very different ways. So I'm gonna start with one up here I'm gonna make this one like really zoomed in, okay? I'm gonna focus pretty heavily on the big orange that's on the left. In fact, I think these are mandarins. I don't know, I got them at Whole Foods yesterday and I think I spent way too much, but they were good. So I think it was worth it. <laughs> they were like nice and plump, not super sweet, but sweet enough. And so the whole thing about these thumbnails, you guys, is you're here to just get the basic shape. For example, your thumbnail sketches, they should not look good, okay? Those of you guys who are drawing miniature masterpieces right now of these thumbnails, that was a waste of your time. You wanna spend your energy on the painting. So make sure that you guys are not over laboring this. You wanna keep it really, really simple just like that. Okay, so we get a little touch of this one in the corner, just like that. That's a thumbnail sketch, okay? It should not take longer than that. By the way, I am going to be alternating between drawing and painting, and then I will also take breaks to stop and read the chat because I can't do both at the same time. So I will get to your comments. If you have questions, just put them in. I'll scroll up during the breaks and I'll get to everybody. Vincent is saying thumbnail sketches help me a lot because I get so overwhelmed drawing a large object and I'm horrible at drawing. Well, I think for me, it's like a warm up. It gets my eye to sharpen. It gets me to look at the reference, to think about what I might want to emphasize, which is why I'm gonna encourage you guys to not just copy the reference, but to actually compose from the reference. Okay, let's do another one. I think this one I'm gonna show more of the setup. So maybe here I'll actually move the paper crate up here. I'm gonna draw a little bit darker to make sure you guys can see, although typically I do like to draw much lighter than that because I think what I've seen sometimes is when I used to teach at RISD, I get students who'd come in and I would require that they do minimum six thumbnail sketches. And they'd come in and every single sketch looked almost identical. In which case it's like, there's not really a point <laughs> to make thumbnail sketches. So one thing you guys wanna aim for when you do do thumbnail sketches is you really should have variety. Each sketch should be a very different take on whatever it is that you want to think about. Now, another thing that I think is handy. So we did draw this rectangle to get started with, but you know what I'm noticing here at the bottom I have a tangent, so the leaf is pressing right up against the edge of the paper, and I don't like that. So what I sometimes do is I'll just take like another color and I'll crop in 
like this. So now I've redrawn the composition like that. And now I can see better that now the leaves are going off the page. And I like this a lot better as a composition because in the other one, there was like all this dead space here, which I don't think was very helpful. Over here, there was a little bit of a tangent. So that's another reason you can do these rectangles is because you can always crop in more or you can actually zoom out. And if you just draw that random grid that I showed you guys, it gets really confusing very fast. Okay, let's do another one up here. I think for this one, I wanna do something that's more elevated towards the top. So how about I put, well, see, actually I just did it. I just almost repeated this exact same composition. So don't do that, okay? Let's think about something a little bit different. Maybe if I focus more on this side, so let's put this orange here, and then this is the little leaf that's falling off the edge. So you're thinking about shapes, you're thinking about placement, you're not trying to impress anybody right now. I'm sure if somebody just caught the stream on YouTube, they'd be like, you can't draw. <laughs> yeah, so this is not the time or the place to be trying to impress anybody, okay? All right, so that's another composition. And actually this one, I think I zoomed in too much. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna pull it out more. So I'm gonna take a different colored pencil. I'm gonna make this a lot bigger as a composition. And now if I wanna go back in, let's say add more of this leaf and maybe show more of this corner on this side. Now you can actually see a little bit more of the crate and I feel like I like that better. So these are the kinds of adjustments that are a pain in the butt to do when you've got your brushes and your paints and your mediums. This is the type of thing you guys wanna work out in advance. We have a question from David who is saying, what's the matter with tangents? I think the issue with tangents is it just feels very awkward because you guys see this leaf here. So this leaf, it's close to the edge, but it's not like right on top of the edge. Or you have a leaf like this where it's just cut in half. It's just an awkward thing. I mean, I'm not saying all tangents are inherently terrible, but in general, they don't tend to work that great for composition. So it might be something that you guys want to consider, or at the very least, just be aware of it, that that can be something that happens. Chloe says, I recently started doing thumbnails after watching your videos and wow, did I underestimate how helpful they are. Yeah, it takes a long time to figure out and to really experience why this process is really helpful because I've had students at RISD say to me, yeah, Clara, I spent 10 weeks of your 12 week class not understanding thumbnails and then it clicked one day. So it takes time. Okay, let's do one more thumbnail down here at the bottom. I think this one, if I look at the reference more carefully, maybe I want to do one. Hmm, I'm trying to think about something that's not like these. So let's actually put the crate over here. Nah, let's put it down here. Let's make the crate really small. Put it at this distance because actually there's these like really dramatic leaves that come down. And then this makes the oranges very small, actually probably way too small. I'm gonna guess right now, even before I draw the whole thing, that probably there's gonna be way too much negative space, but like, don't worry about that. You'll fix that later, okay? So you guys might look at the sketch and say, oh, well, Clara, you barely drew anything. But the thing is like, I can already tell from looking at the sketch that it's way too much background. Like, see, this is all background. Like half of this composition is just background, it's blank. I mean, yeah, there's a couple shadows back there, but it's nothing to write home about. So what I'm gonna do is the same thing is I'm gonna actually go in, I'm gonna crop with my pencil with a different color. And maybe this time, let me think. I don't want it to look too much like this one though. So maybe I'll crop it like this. Okay, this is a little wild, <laughs> this is tiny. So this is a really small portion of that. 
And now what I'm going to end up with is an image that actually does not have the crate in it at all. Now, this thumbnail that I'm doing right here, this like teeny, teeny, tiny one, because I decided to get rid of all this stuff here. This one's so small, I don't know what's going on. So if I were to pick this one, I definitely would have to draw another version because this is like totally unusable. So what I'm going to do right now, you guys, I'm going to number these and you're going to help me pick which one you would like me to do for this paint along. Okay, so the top one is number one. This one is number two. This one is number three. And this one is number four. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is make the composition a little bit more clear. And not only do you guys have to pick one of these, but you have to tell me why you think that is the better composition. You guys thought this was a pain one. You're getting a lesson in composition. You guys can't escape composition. Composition is everywhere, especially in painting. It's not the type of thing that you can just forget about when you are working on something. I think especially in painting, it's just a lot more necessary. So I'm just making these a little bit darker so you guys can see them better. But yeah, tell me in the chat, which one do you like better? Number one, number two, or number three? And tell me why, what is it about that one? Or maybe you guys wanna tell me why you don't like number one or why you don't like number three, because that is in itself very helpful as well. So I'm just adding a little bit of tone because that is sort of helpful as far as understanding a little bit of the shadows like underneath this leaf. So in a thumbnail sketch, you don't need to go full out with shading, but it does help to know, okay, well, the shadow is here, the highlight is here. And then also to know, for example, that, okay, these leaves are quite dark. So this would be the next stage that I would probably bring the thumbnail to if I was going to really spend a lot of time on this, something more like this and then maybe emphasizing something like that, okay? So that that's still not, again, like a brilliant sketch, but it gets the point across. Like you understand pretty much what is going on. Okay, so we have a lot of comments here. This is fantastic. And you guys read what other people are saying because there's no correct answer to this. I think the important thing is that you guys understand, okay, why are people saying they like one or two better? Explain that. I think that's important. So let's see what people are saying. Mackenzie says three has all the elements, but doesn't just awkwardly center one. It's nice when stuff touches the side of the paper. Abby says, I like one because there's less negative space. You can really get into the detail of the oranges. Your eyes will be drawn to the oranges detail, which is less prevalent in three. Yeah, and you guys can see a lot of this depends on what you're interested in. Like some of you guys, I bet some of you <laughs> looked at the still and thought, oh, I don't want to paint that box. And that's fine if you don't want to paint that box. Some of you might say, oh, oranges are boring. I love paper boxes. And whatever you guys want to do, it's totally up to you. Christine is saying not enough of the view of the fruit in number three. And that would be somebody who wants to paint the fruit. You know, maybe somebody doesn't so much. So it really depends. And Cole is saying number one, because the leaf is about a third in from the side, a third up from the bottom, which is very pleasing to the eye in my opinion. Great, well, thank you guys so much for all this. I'm gonna to explain to you which one I am going to choose and exactly why. I'm gonna go for number one. The reason I'm going for number one is because my interest in this reference image, it's really in the fruit, but I want the box, but I don't want the whole box. So you guys can see a lot of my reasoning for picking this one doesn't necessarily have to do with, oh, well, that one's better. It's more this composition it suits my interests. It's highlighting the parts of the composition that I want to talk about. So like doing this one, number three, this is a fine composition. Like I don't have a problem with it, but so much of it is the box. And for me, I don't really want to paint the box. I mean, I don't mind it, but I'd rather spend time working on these oranges. So that's my reasoning for that. But again, it really depends on what you guys want to do. Okay, now what I'm gonna do since I've picked the piece is I'm gonna do just a little bit more sketching. So I get more comfortable 
with exactly what's going on here and I can understand better what are some of the relationships or what are some of the things that I'm gonna be thinking about when I actually get to the painting. So although this might feel unnecessary because you're like, oh, well, you already picked the sketch. It's not though, because now what I'm trying to do is figure out, okay, well, where are the pockets of dark? Like for example, most of this is actually all in shadow. So like this whole section here, which is the bottom part of the box, this is all shadow, okay? So at least I can understand that shape pretty well. And then here it gets like really dark because that's the inside. And the, the leaves are very dark. The leaves are like the darkest part of the whole piece. They're even darker, I would say, than the box. So I'm gonna just really push that so I have a good understanding. So really what you're doing here is you're trying to understand, okay, what's going on here value-wise? What's happening in terms of the context and the lighting? Like here, I'll just do a little light shading on that orange. This leaf is really dark towards the bottom. So I think this step, it doesn't have to take a long time, but it does get you ready because now you start to see the composition as a bunch of abstract shapes, as opposed to just saying, oh, orange leaf box. You don't want to think about that. You want to start to look at the arrangement a little bit more carefully. And so like this little pocket of space that's underneath this leaf, that's a pretty important element. And actually here, probably I should show like there's these little black slits that come in and this one's pretty dark too. All right. So does everybody see that literally only took about 15 minutes, okay? But I really feel much more prepared to go in. And that's not to say that you have to stay so incredibly faithful to this sketch. I mean, some things are gonna fluctuate and that's fine, but it's better than just diving in totally blind with no plan at all, which for me would be terrifying. So anyway, this is the one that I'm going to do. And the other thing I'm gonna to do too, I think it's very helpful to have the sketch available. A lot of people do this. I, I, you guys are gonna have to explain why people do this, but I have a lot of students. They spend all this time in these sketches. They do a great job and then they put them away. I'm like, don't you wanna look at it? <laughs> don't you wanna reference what's going on with your sketch? So I just cut it out and I just have it nearby like this, okay? I'm probably gonna put it off the screen at some point, but in theory, I would put it over here on the side so I can actually look at it while I'm painting. So your time with the thumbnail sketch, it doesn't end after you guys finish drawing. It, it's just getting started. Like it's there for you very much as a guide. Okay, let's see what else people are saying in the chat. Nolan is saying, how do you feel about water mixable oils? I have not answered yet. And actually, <laughs> guys, I have a confession. I have never used water mixable oil paints in my life, never. So you know what? I'm just gonna warn you right now, if you guys wanna see something masterful, this is not the stream for you. <laughs> Go watch somebody who has decades of experience because I do not. This is one gigantic experiment. You guys have seen my Procreate streams. It's not gonna be like that, but it's not gonna be masterful. You're gonna watch me stumble through it. I've never used these, but I've been very curious because I know a lot of people, obviously the hazards of oil painting, it's a big turnoff if you have a home studio, you have to deal with disposal and all that. So I'm here, honestly, to get tips from you guys. So those of you who have you walk, bleh, those of you who have used water mixable oil colors, I can take all the help I can get. So let me know if you've used it, any tips or tricks that you guys have. We have a question here. Bleepkin says, so you always refine the thumbnails, values and everything after you choose the winner before the actual sketch. Yeah, because here's the thing guys. If you guys look at this other page, okay? Let me put these aside so you can see better. All right. I could have in theory drawn all four of these with full up value and stuff like that. I could have done that and then picked the sketch, but I didn't do that. 
I did the outlines, I picked the sketch, and then I did the value. So I end up saving time. I didn't do value on all four sketches. I only did it on one because that is the one I knew I wanted to spend time on. And so this is where thumbnails, they really become a time saver, which I know for a lot of people, it feels like it doesn't make any sense because people say, well, I'm just really eager. I want to get to the painting. I don't want to waste time. And I'm like, yeah, but by doing this, you're saving time so that you aren't having to do so much backtracking. And I think that gets very frustrating to people always feel like they're backtracking. I know for me, I like to feel like I'm moving ahead. And if I have to go back and fix things multiple times, I feel like it just feels like a big bummer. So anyway, <laughs> okay, let's get going. So the technique that I'm gonna show you guys today is a monochrome technique. So I would recommend if you guys are painting, pick one color. It doesn't have to be any particular color. I happen to like using earth tones because I like earth tones, they're pretty. <laughs> I mean, why do you think everybody likes terracotta clay? That's pretty much it. And so the tools that I have, for those of you guys who have a home studio, okay? See the stuff? I have it on my table right here. You just can't see it. This is freezer paper. It's here and I just taped it down. Um, I used my, my good friend, blue painter's tape. I cannot live without the stuff. It's awesome. But freezer paper is so good. You know why? First of all, you can get it at any grocery store. It's so much cheaper than those disposable pallets you buy at art stores. And you guys, check this out. It's huge. So in theory, if you want like a giant palette, you can just cover your whole paper, your table and have a gigantic palette. It's great because honestly, my gloss palette is still in storage. So I haven't had a chance to get it out. So freezer paper, really great thing to use if you guys have a home studio. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start out just by putting a little blob here. I'm not gonna have much of a palette today because it's just monochrome. So I don't think it really matters that much. But the thing I'm going to do is get my biggest brush. First of all, I'm just gonna try it. I don't know what this stuff is like. I'm a little freaked out. So I've got a little bit of water here. And actually, Windsor Newton sent me all these mediums. So we have safflower oil. And we also have stand oil, which is basically like thick honey, like linseed oil. And we also have fast drawing medium, which is good for me because I get very impatient. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start with the safflower oil because I feel like the stand oil might be a little bit too much. Now, typically I prefer buying little plastic squeeze bottles and pouring the oils in there, but again, it's the moving problem. <laughs> I just moved, so I still cannot find half of my art supplies. So we're just gonna start with these little jars. Not my favorite thing, but you know, whatever, that's okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is blend this up a little bit and I'm just gonna put a very thin wash. All right, it feels a little slippery, but you know, it has been a while since I've painted but I don't mind the way this feels so far. I mean, I know a lot of people really wanted to hear my opinion of, okay, well, how does this compare against oil paint? So I'll let you know in a minute once I actually start doing something that's more painterly. But just to answer a question about the surface, I am using gesso board, which is made by Ampersand. They make clay board and they also make scratch board and all kinds of things. And you guys can find the link in the video description below. And the reason I'm not using a canvas is because my colleague and friend, Kathy Speranza, who, oh, I shouldn't have thought about her. Now I'm gonna get like serious self-esteem issues. Anyway, <laughs> she's such a brilliant painter, but she had recommended to me painting it on panels which honestly I have not really done that much. I would say most of the time when I've painted, I've always painted with canvas. I guess I painted on paper. Like oftentimes I'll stretch paper and paint on that after it's been gessoed, but panels I really have not spent a lot of time painting with. So it's very curious because Kathy Speranza only uses panels and I sort of worship her painting. So I was like, okay, 
I'm going to be a Kathy Speranza wannabe. <laughs> and I'm going to rip off my friend and just do all these things that she told me to do. So we'll start with that. OK, so the concept behind this technique is you basically put down a ground that's like a mid-tone, OK? And I do think it is worth it to blend it out so it is a little bit smooth. I mean, I don't need it to be perfect, but I just feel like if you have crazy brush strokes and patterns, it's just a little bit distracting. So I'm just going to go back and forth and smooth a lot of this out so it's a little bit easier to deal with, OK? All right, let's start with that. <laughs> All right, here we go. So what I usually like to do is I start with a, a pretty small brush. There's lots of different types of brushes. This is my favorite type of brush. This is actually a bigger version of it. This is called a filbert. I like these because they're a little bit rounded at the edges and they're longer. I don't tend to like these ones as much. This one, which is a little bit more square, these feel a little bit stiff for me. I tend to like these filberts better, but you know, whatever floats your boat, it really does not matter. Okay, so I'm gonna get out my reference and I've got my thumbnail nearby and I'm going to take the paint and I'm just gonna sketch. I'm not gonna actually do any painting. But before I do that, I'm gonna take a quick peek in the chat and see what people are asking. Marcelie says, how do you flawlessly do a wash? Well, these are the only supplies I have right now. I just took safflower oil. You guys might be able to use water. I don't know. I mean, I suspect that maybe with water, it might break down the pigment too much. That's why I didn't do water. I mean, I know you obviously you can use water to wash the brushes, but in general, if I'm painting with oils, I don't usually like to paint with solvents. I'd much rather use a mixture of an oil medium. That tends to be a lot better. All right, let's see what else people are saying. Yeah, C. Cantrell says, I feel like I'm in another dimension because water and oil don't mix. Don't even try to ask me <laughs> about the signs of this stuff, you guys, because I really have no idea and I am not very scientific when it comes to painting. Okay, let's get going. So I have my reference photo there and let me pull this up. And so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna try really hard to fluctuate between the reference photo and also my thumbnail. Because if I don't do that, I'm gonna get lost really fast, guys. Ooh, this is really, this is really slippery. Okay, hang on. A lot of squinting has to happen, guys. So I'm just gonna really quickly block stuff in. It's gonna look like crap. I, I'm telling you guys, you wanna see something masterful? This is not the stream for you. Go watch something else. <laughs> watch, watch James Gurney paint gouache. That is truly masterful. He's incredible. But you're not gonna see fireworks tonight. I'm sorry to tell you that. This is me troubleshooting, figuring things out, seeing how things are, and giving you guys the real deal. Art is messy. It is not always masterful. It's oftentimes very, very confusing. And I'm going to guess you're going to see a lot of that today. All right. All right. So that's a super ultra quick sketch. And what I need to do now is just stop myself for a second and see where that is. Because it's so easy to get like way off. Like I'm already seeing that this is where that edges. So actually, you know what I'm going to do? I might just draw with the, no, that's not going to work. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say I was going to draw with the back, but that's not going to work out so great. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fix this. And actually, I'm going to use these paper towels. I don't know if you guys have seen these before, but these are blue shot towels. <gasps> Look at the complimentary colors. The orange and the blue. Sorry. The big dork in me wants to see all that. Anyway, the reason I like these shot towels is that they're like paper towels, but they're a little bit more durable than regular paper towels. And so I like using them for that reason. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. And let's see, I gotta make some changes. This is gonna be a big mess, guys. 
um, because I can already see that I didn't place that so great. Really what I need to do is place that. But the thing is, I wanna make sure I get this like corner over here. Oh, this feels like a terrible blobby mess. Oh, see that this is like, you know what this is you guys? This is the anti-tutorial. You know how tutorials are supposed to be people like doing, Woo, this is like amazing thing and I'm so good at it. This is the anti-tutorial. <laughs> um, yeah, it's sort of like those of you guys who watch or know Superman, it's like bizarro tutorial, you know? It's like the tutorial where you don't learn anything. You just watch people mess up, <laughs> which actually is a big part of learning is watching people mess up. Okay, now I'm looking at this. I don't like that either. That's way too high up. I don't think I'm getting enough of the oranges. So what I'm gonna do, I actually move this all the way down here. I'm sure you guys cannot follow what I'm doing, but you know what, I don't care because I have to do this if I want to do anything that's remotely. Ugh, okay, this looks like crap. You know what I'm gonna do? Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more line work and then I'm gonna go right into the rag. So I'll show you guys what that looks like in a minute because honestly, I'm just making this up as I go along. This is not anything more sophisticated than that. I know people expect things to be more fancy, but sorry, it just isn't sometimes. Sometimes you're just like a Neanderthal artist just trying to work things out, okay? All right, now I've painted everything way too many times, but here's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna take my cotton rags and I'm gonna just go at it because honestly, the rag is the part of this that I love. Oh, that feels better. Dude, why didn't I start with the rag? The rag is way better. Okay, so this is like a subtractive technique where basically you come in and you use the rag to pull out highlights. You can do this on a canvas, but from what I've seen, it seems to be easier to do on panel because it's just like a lot smoother, but it's up to you guys. I think this is not enough. I think I need to go all the way out there. Okay. Because this is a take somewhat on this technique that I do for charcoal, which I'm sure you guys have seen me do, where you put down vine charcoal and then you remove some of the highlights and then you add the darks. So this is sort of like a riff on that, okay? Now, this is handy because I can start to look at some of the negative space. Like there's this white that is actually behind the box and then this leaf like comes in. So that's another thing is it will get you to see past just the most obvious things. Like here is a little bit of negative space. So you end up really painting around things, which I think is great in terms of making sure you remember to do those backgrounds that we all like to put off so much. <laughs> okay, let's see. A lot of squinting here, a lot of squinting and a lot of stepping back, okay? Yes, this is a mess. Yes, I know, but too bad. You gotta start that way. Um, I'm just looking at these three highlights because that's a way to group all of those together. And then just little patches again of that negative space and I know that sounds weird because a lot of people would say, well, why don't you just wipe it out rather than painting like around? But I actually think it, it just helps me think about it more sculpturally so that way I can think more about the volume and about the form and not get distracted by other things. Okay, I don't like this angle. I think this angle is not as dramatic as I have it. Although I'm working at a funny angle because of my webcam. so. A lot of this, while it is similar to what I would do, it's not quite the same thing. So, okay. Now I'm gonna just step back and squint and let's see how we're doing. All right, let's see what people are saying in the chat. Kara says, this is so satisfying. I remember this technique when I painted in college and I miss it. This is so fun. I mean, I just like one color I've never used these paints before. And so I did not want to go full in all the colors on the planet because I knew I was going to get really overwhelmed really quickly. C. Cantrell says, do these paints smell like traditional oils? So far they don't. 
I smell something, but it's really, really mild and it's nowhere near like Gamsol, which is the solvent that I happen to use for oil painting. So there's an odor, but it's barely there. So I'm really not worried about that. Elizabeth says, I was expecting you to use paper towel to remove color. How come you didn't? That's a great question. So the thing about the rag, I know this sounds weird. It just feels better. <laughs> like I just like how it feels. It's also more absorbent. And the other thing about these shop towels, I don't know for sure, but I think that these are probably more likely to leave behind fibers. Whereas I think the rag doesn't do that as much. I could be wrong. I just like how this feels softer. You totally can use this. Like it's not the end of the world if you want to. I just, I'm used to rags because I use them a lot for printmaking. And so for me, it feels a little bit easier for that reason. All right, let's see what else people are talking about. Mouse says, I love how the oil stains the canvas and still looks butter smooth. I've never worked with it before. Well, you should give it a shot. Tom is asking how long to dry. I have no idea. I mean, this is still really wet and it doesn't even feel close to drying. So I'm gonna have to experiment and see. I mean, maybe if some of you guys here have used this before, you can give me some ideas about how long it takes, but I really have no idea. <laughs> I mean, I probably should have looked up some of this stuff online first, but I liked the idea of doing this tutorial just blind and discovering things as they go. Because honestly, that a lot of the times, that's just how the way stuff is. Like you, you don't always know until you do it. And so I thought that would be a little bit more fun. Alex says, Professor Lou emollients are able to make oil and water mix. So there is emollients in the paint. I'm not sure what kind, it could even be eggs. Oh, well, that's really cool. Thanks so much. And Art Plethora is saying, do you need good ventilation with these paints? I hope you don't, because I don't have ventilation right now. <laughs> I don't think you do. I mean, I think that's, I'm gonna guess, the whole reason why that's the, why they've made these is so that you don't have to. Somebody can correct me, but that was my assumption when I was looking at the paints that they are not going to have the kind of toxins that oil paint has. I mean, I read the back of this and everything and there isn't any scary language the way there is on the back of oil paint. So I'm not so worried. Winged Canvas says, two days or so, depending on how thick the white is. Oh, that's a while. Two days is sort of a long time. I sort of thought that they would last a little bit less long, but that's really interesting. JV is saying, can you replicate this technique with canvas? Totally, absolutely. The only thing is canvas, well, it depends on what type of canvas, but most canvas is more textured than the panel that I'm using. So the marks that you put in, they're not gonna be as slick and as smooth. I happen to like the panel better, but you can totally do this on canvas as well. Abby is saying, usually tacky after 24 hours, completely dry in 48. AJ is saying, hair dryer, or will it burst into flames? Okay, I am not trying that, AJ. That sounds like a bad idea. I could do that with gouache, and I could do that with watercolor, but I would not try that with this stuff because I really have no idea. Nope is asking, what color? I am using burnt sienna, and I like burnt sienna a lot because it has a lot of yellow in it, so it has a little bit more of a glow than if say you use burnt umber or raw umber, those are a little bit more dull. I happen to like the luminous quality of that a lot more. John Murph is saying the mediums might require some ventilation maybe. I don't think so because usually if that is the case, it usually says, please use with proper ventilation. But this says, particularly suitable for use with whites and pale colors, dry slowly, clean with water. I don't see any warnings, so I think this is probably fine in terms of not having any ventilation. Okay, Jazz is saying there's a quick dry medium, but it makes your paint really glossy. Okay, that's what I have here. This is fast drying medium, and I've never used it before. I'm gonna just not use anything but safflower oil just in the beginning because I feel like it's overwhelming for me right now. Okay, so let's see where I am. Okay, I'm gonna get back to my reference. 
So keep painting, you guys, and let's see where we can take this. I mean, I can't guarantee there's going to be anything worth looking at by the end of the stream, but that's okay. That's fine. Okay, back to the rag. Let's tighten up a little bit because I think in the beginning, I just wanted to like throw something down, but I think it's time to get more specific. Still going to do some rag stuff. And you know, I might end up just destroying the whole thing, but I don't know. I think painting sort of like that. It's a resurrection process. Like you, you murder your painting, you bring it back. It's just sort of the way it works, you know? Okay. A lot of squinting, a lot of stepping back. I mean, if I wasn't glued to this position because of the stream, I totally would be getting up and looking from a distance. I mean, you guys can probably see my drawing face right now because I'm just really leaning back like this and not looking at details. I just want to get the big forms going. Let's really get rid of, oh crap. I really, ugh, that was a big mess. Okay, hello, blue shot towel. I need you to rescue me. Just get rid of that. Okay, let's put that over there. All right. I think the beginning of a painting, guys, give me your best analogy for what the beginning of a painting feels like to you. For me, I would say it feels like a slippery fish out of water. You can't really control it. It's doing its own thing and you feel very out of control. I feel very mushy right now. That's how the beginning of a painting makes me feel. So tell me how it makes you guys feel. All right, because I really want the lighting to come across. Okay, let's do this. I'm putting away this big brush and I'm gonna get back into the small brush. I mean, typically I don't like to use these small brushes, but when I'm just like sketching stuff in, okay, now I really have to, okay. <laughs> I'm really gonna show you guys how I paint. I look like a weirdo. Like I really have to like do this and you know what? That's too picky. I don't like this. Okay. Who else is having this narrative in their head? Because I just thought to myself, okay, Clara, you're going to go in and you're really going to like sketch stuff out and get a better grip on the image, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go back to this big ass brush so that I can start to really look for planes. That's what I really need to be doing right now. So Let's try to do some big strokes that are bigger than I'm comfortable with that I don't want to make the piece get too picky too fast. So this brush that I'm using is way too big. It's, it's not what I want right now, but that's why you need it. So those of you guys who paint in a picky manner, with teeny tiny brushes in the beginning, uh-uh, you're not going to do that. You're using a big fat brush that is so much bigger than you want it to be, but it's going to get you guys to not pick because in the beginning of the painting, you can't do that. You can't pick. So I'm just going to build up some of these larger shapes, like especially down here. You know, I might try the slow dry medium only because it's a live stream. I think it's harder for me to take my time to layer. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. I'm glad I'm using this big paintbrush. Like even though this paintbrush is way bigger than I would like it to be, it's still, I think, helping me keep track of the big shapes because that's the biggest issue. You guys, I think in painting people just go for the little stuff too fast. Okay. So what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to get some of the paint out of my brush. So that way my brush is a little bit more dry. And you know what? I think I am going to whip out the fast drawing medium because it feels a little slippery right now. So let's just try it. Maybe I'll regret it. I have no idea. We'll see. This is one big experiment, you guys. That's what this all is. Okay. So I'm just gonna throw a little bit of that in here and let's see how it works. I hope it doesn't mess up my lighting because sometimes the lighting gets funky when the stuff gets really glossy. Okay, I'm just gonna throw in some of that. Let's just see what happens. You know, if it's terrible, whatever. <laughs> okay, let's try to paint more deliberately. I think I'm sort of awake, <laughs> I hope. 
And I'm going to build it maybe a little thicker than I think I should. And I want to block in like where are the darkest darks? Be more like this. So, yeah, I guess the thing is, it doesn't feel as, um, what's the word? I feel like these water mixable paints, they are more slippery. They're a little bit softer feeling. I feel like the oil has a little bit more substance to it. They don't feel that similar though. I will tell you that. They definitely feel different. I mean, I almost would say it doesn't really feel like, well, I don't know. It's really hard to describe. Well, let me do a little bit more and maybe I can get more specific. But right now it doesn't have the like bite that I really, really like about oil painting. I'm not getting that right now. It does feel very slippery. That's maybe the thing I don't like. Cause I, I like my stuff to have a little bit of a bite to it. So that could be just my personal thing, but um, that is definitely something I'm noticing right now about the stuff. Okay, so let's get in this like, all right, this is thicker than I would like it to be, but I'm getting the feeling that I need to build up more to get this to not look horrible. So let's just build it up. And if it's really bad, we can always wipe it away. That's the thing I kind of like about this technique is having that ability to do that. Okay, and I'm trying to really focus on big shapes. Don't get caught up into those little things. I promise I won't. I was so bad. Like when I was in school, I was the worst. Like everything that I bother you guys about, I was like total example of what not to do so much in art school. I was sort of a late bloomer. I don't know. Like I was talking to somebody the other day that I think I'm a better teacher than I am artist because I don't know, teaching feels more natural to me. Like the, the whole painting process to me did not feel that natural. So anyway, okay, let's, I don't know. I also feel kind of crappy right now because I feel like I should be thinking about marks and experimenting, but I'm so distracted by the weirdness of this material that I'm actually having a hard time doing that right now. But I think that does happen. I think when you are working with a different material, you just can't do everything all at once. It's too difficult. So if you are finding that that is the case, that's fine. I think that's totally cool. Okay, more squinting. And actually, I got to get my rag back. Where's my rag? I think there's some funky shape stuff back here. Hmm. All right, let me get this further up. At the very least, I think what I should do is just get down the dark of the leaves. So that's established. So we get a full value range. I'm not that worried about the drawing yet because the drawing will come later, but I need to show that, okay, there is this big stem that comes up that connects here to here. That matters more, you guys, than, oh, the nuance on the left side of the orange. Like, who cares about that? That doesn't really matter so much. What does matter, though, is blocking in the big shapes. Okay, so here I am going to take out the small brush just because I'm not going to be able to paint that section without it. And I guess there's like a big blob over here. Yeah, that's kind of coming up like that. Yeah. Also, I'm painting flat right now just because it's easier for the setup, but that's not really my preference. Like I'd rather be on an easel, but whatever. This is just easier from a live streaming tech issue point of view. Although it is making me nervous how close this is to my laptop, but whatever, that's fine, we'll survive. <laughs> okay. Um, and down here, maybe some indication of that black spot towards the bottom, like that. All right, so that's my first super ultra messy pass. And let's see what you guys are talking about in the chat. I'm gonna just scroll up and see what people are talking about. Let's see. JV says, feels like ice skating for the first time in a long time. Oh, I totally know that feeling. <laughs> Losado says the start of a war, you know what has to be done, even though you might be scared. That is great. That pretty much sums up what a lot of paintings feel like in the beginning. Isaiah is saying my beginnings are fast and chaotic. 
R.B. Dick says it's like you climbing, you're climbing to a mountaintop. And let's see, what else are people saying? Shaim says the beginning of a painting is like taking a turn without knowing if there's a car coming. Wow, that sounds really terrifying. <laughs> Frankie D is asking, do you think it's important to paint with oil paints before college? No, I think oil paint, it's not something you should do until you have the resources and the facility to do it well, because I did not. <laughs> And I learned it really badly. And it took me so long to undo all the stupid things that I was doing that it really frustrated me that I did that. Because I was so eager in high school. Like I really, really wanted to paint with oils. And I tried to do it with no guidance, no internet, no books. And wow, big surprise. It was a total car crash. So just wait until you have somebody who can really guide you and the supplies and all the information because it's just too difficult to do. So Tainley says, do you have a medium that is your go-to when you are doing your signature work? What do you paint with? Well, I'm gonna confess to you guys, I'm really not a painter, okay? I really am not. Like I thought I was when I was in art school. I was really into paint. I'm not a very good painter. I love how I'm telling you this as I'm leaving Kutura, but I'm really not. I'm somebody who paints and I know how to do it. But I would say if I am painting with oils, I have a mixture that I use. It's in our oil painting tutorial. It's three parts Gamsol, one part linseed, and one part stand. And I use that to use as a medium when I paint. That's pretty much it. But Kathy Speranza taught me a lot of cool stuff too. So I'm trying to incorporate some of her techniques as well. And we do have an interview with her and an upcoming tutorial that is coming up pretty soon. All right, Jazz is saying, can you glaze with water mixable oils over a regular old oil grisaille? I'm not sure. That's probably something for the Windsor Newton people to answer because I've never done that before. Chloe says, I think it's great to normalize the messiness of experimenting and not trying too hard to be a perfectionist in these beginning stages. It's real. I mean, nobody just sits down and whips it out. I feel like YouTube and Instagram have created these completely fantastical versions of what artists are. I'm like, no way, we're not like that. We're totally messy and flawed and we are messing up most of the time. Maria says, when I get tired or overwhelmed by being too loose, I get picky and focus on detail. When that gets to be too much to me, I go back to loose. Yeah, you have to fluctuate. It's between those two different Thanks. Okay, guys, let's do some more on the next pass. My feeling right now about the paint is that it's just lighting too much, but it could just be me in the panel. So I don't know what to blame here. I mean, I could just blame myself. That probably would be the more accurate thing to be blaming it on. But what I'm going to do is pump out a little bit more paint and I'm going to start building it up a little bit more deliberately. Because here's the thing. The best laid plans, you guys, they're not going to happen. Because when I sat down today, I was like, oh, I'm going to do glazing and I'm going to build it up thinly because I've always wanted to be one of those people. I really did. But I can't do it. God, it's like I just tried. I couldn't do it. So let's just go back to what I sort of have more of a handle on. Um, and that's OK. I think that things are chaotic in the beginning and it's OK to give yourself a little bit of that leeway, because I do know a lot of students, they give themselves a hard time. They say, oh, well, I said I was going to experiment with this and I was going to really push myself here. I'm like, you can't push yourself all the time on everything. You just can't. There's certain times when you say it's OK for me to just be lazy and do a not so hot job here. It's fine. That That's Okay, when you're learning, you gotta let, there's some things you gotta let them go. <laughs> you can't go crazy, or at least I would. Okay, so let me, hmm. You know what I gotta do? I gotta make sure the oranges don't get too light. So actually, thinking this through, I'm trying to figure out a good strategy. Maybe if I darken up the leaves back here and I, maybe get this more to like a mid-tone, more like this. Because actually the oranges are not that light. I think I just did that in the beginning because I needed something. But now let me just make them a little bit darker. 
because I want to not sacrifice all those highlights. It's nowhere near that bright. So let's just block that in. Like really, actually the brightest highlight is the one in the orange in the back. And so if you guys have not done that, you might try to really keep that in mind because I think it's easy to lose track of that pretty quickly. All right, let me just clean up a little bit of this stuff up here because I do need to draw a little bit more accurately what's going on. Anybody feel out of shape, like out of shape painting, out of shape? <laughs> like that's how I feel right now. Cause like, I don't get to draw all the time but I have been drawing quite a bit for the draw alongs, like we've been doing the procreate stuff and everything. And so I wouldn't say I'm in like Olympic level shape for drawing, but I mean, oh my God, I swear the last time I painted, I think it was like before the pandemic, which was a long time ago, unfortunately. So yeah, I'm not feeling it, but this is refreshing for me. And I enjoy doing something that's just a change of pace. Like tell me in the chat, you guys, when's the last time you painted? Was it yesterday? Was it six years ago? Be honest, you could tell me. I'm here telling you I haven't painted in a long time and I'm the one leading the tutorial. So let me know, I'm just curious. Because it's okay, I think, for things to come in and out of your life. It's, it's okay. You, you don't have to always be doing something for so long. You know, I gave up color. I think around 2004, I just was like, I, dude, I'm done with color, I hate you. And <laughs> I had this like wonderful, blissful couple of years <laughs> with no color and it was great. But then when I started Art Prof, people really wanted to learn about color for good reason. I was like, crap, I have to start doing color again. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I don't mind teaching about color. I, I like that. It's fun to talk about color. And of course, I've got Lauren here, who is a teaching artist, and she really helps me with that. But like in my own personal work, I'm not into color for my work. I'm not saying I don't like color in general. Okay. Um, hmm. I'm trying to get this tilt of this leaf and build that up. I feel like. Hang on, I gotta like really squint. All right, let's go back. Oh, shoot, I think this is, it's a drawing issue. See, it's hard because I feel like in painting, I'm never quite sure, should I be drawing or should I be painting? Because even though I'm holding a brush, like if I'm just doing stuff like this, to me, this feels more like painting, okay? But if I take this and I'm like fixing angles, like that to me feels more like drawing. And of course, everybody has different takes on, oh, what's drawing? and whatever, but I definitely have two different mindsets. Like right now I'm just thinking about the stroke. Whereas when I take the little brush, at least at this stage, I feel like I'm more just sketching things out. And actually speaking of that, we should probably work on some of these tones a little bit better. And I guess this comes a little bit lower like that. Okay, yeah, let's build this up. I wasn't thinking I was going to have to build it up so much, but I feel like I am needing to do that. I'm not sure if it's the paint or if it's me. Hard to tell. So many factors to be considering. I am having fun though. <laughs> as much as I think my painting is a total wreck, this is fun. It's fun because I don't feel like I have to do a great job. I mean, there are a lot of people watching right now, but whatever. Let's try to not think about that. <laughs> I mean, if you haven't gotten over it at this point, I'm not going to get over it. <laughs> okay, let's bring out some more rag. And I'm going to like really show off this highlight. This one's going to be a little less. And this, this one's actually bigger. I think I sort of lost it a little bit. Okay, now I'm really going to pull out back here. And actually for this, I might, I don't know if this is going to work. Let me just dip my rag into some water. Oh, yeah, that did work. Okay, cool. So that's something you guys can do. If you want to make this a lot lighter, just dip your rag in the water and then that's gonna pull more off the panel like that. And that'll make it much brighter. Actually, I might need to tone down the contrast because I can see in the webcam that the saturation's a little bit too much. Okay, it's a little bit better. Yeah, and sorry for the glare. I'll see next time. It's hard because you start the, painting from scratch. And so I can't always tell exactly the light until the paint is actually on the canvas, which is not gonna happen until after. But this does give me the chance to go in 
<clears throat> and just remove some of these areas. So the, the rye will take care of some of that there. So in theory, if this was regular oil paint, you would be dipping your rag into like Gamsol or your solvent, and that would then get rid of that. So actually, let me go back to my reference photo so I can take a better look. Let's see. I want to really get something a lot cleaner going on in that area, like especially here. Let's really pull that out. Hmm. Definitely some drawing issues right now, but I'm less concerned about that and more concerned about really getting just a value range established. I don't care that much about the nuances just yet. I'm not close to that. Okay, so like there's this really bright, like white negative space here. That is definitely an area I wanna take the rag and really make that very clear and bright. That's gonna be better. Okay, yeah. And then here too, like this is really bright up there. Let's get behind, oh, that's a mess, sheesh, terrible. Okay, let's try that. Okay, not great, but it's a start for sure. Let me pull down the saturation. I think the saturation was probably set for other streams in the past because it's definitely not that orange. Let's see if I can fix that. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, good. Let's see what people are saying in the chat. Nolan says, after Lauren recommended Oops Paints in her acrylic painting video, I've been obsessed with it. So cheap, I love it. I know, it's those little hacks that can make a really big difference, especially if you're on a budget. You know, you don't have to spend a crazy amount of money on everything all the time. Sometimes you do, but other times there are those nice little hacks. Morning Atlas says, maybe it's the fast drying medium you put in that's the problem. Well, that might be the gloss. I think that could be it because I don't remember putting it over here. But honestly, I don't mind the gloss. It's just an issue with like the studio lights that I have. So you guys probably can't see this as well. But for the second stream, because I'm definitely going to spend another stream working on this piece, I'll be able to set up the lights better because I'll know in advance exactly what the painting is going to look like. Angie says, last time I painted was six months ago before I moved to Texas. Now I don't have a studio, don't have the opportunity to paint. It's hard if you don't have a dedicated space to paint. It can be a real pain. I mean, it's so much stuff. This is way more complicated than when I just have a sheet of paper and colored pencil. It's 10 times the setup. And so that's one of the reasons why I just am like, you know, it's not a big deal, guys. Like, honestly, acrylic and gouache and watercolor will keep you busy. So you should not feel that like, oh my God, I have to go and do this. Okay, so let's see what else people are saying. Simple Triscoll says, I messed up a painting two days ago, waiting for it to dry. Yeah, that's one reason why if I was doing this as my own personal studio work, I would usually have three or four paintings all progressing at the same time because inevitably one painting drives you a little crazy you can take a break from it and work on something else and jump around that's very helpful for me because i get to a point where i'm just looking at a drawing for way too long i'm sick to death of it but i know it's not finished and so that distance that you take from your work i think is really really helpful I want to say welcome to Dom Solicis, who says I'm new here. For some reason, YouTube gave me this. Cool. Well, I hope you'll stick around. And Morning Atlas says the orange you saw was actually burnt sienna. Yeah, the colors are, oh, this is the one thing about live streaming that honestly drives me bats is the colors are like impossible to get, like not even close. So I know that we can't release those studio tutorials. I mean, unless Bill Gates gives me lots of money and can hire a big army of video editors, which I'm sorry, it's not happening anytime soon. We can't produce those very often because they just take so long. But one of the things I do like about those studio tutorials is that we can get it accurate, like as accurate as possible. And that makes me feel much better. Whereas with the live streams, it's just the quality is just not good enough. Um, the technology just isn't there that yet, probably in like I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I actually, it'll probably sooner than we think, but it just isn't up to par with shooting um, 
for example, on a DSLR with like full out lights and editing. It's just not the same thing, unfortunately. Okay, I'm gonna do some more squinting. And you know what I'm gonna do guys? Maybe if I tilt it, it might actually help. I think that made it worse. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, that might've made it worse. Yeah, that did. Okay, let's just keep it flat. That's probably the better way to go about doing that. YY says, I have so much schoolwork. I haven't drawn in two months. I feel so bad. I hate it. You want to feel better, YY? You guys, I once took a two-year break from my studio practice. Nothing for two years. Now, granted, I was working on Art Prof, okay? But my own studio practice, I had these two solo shows in 2014, and they burned me out so bad, and they were so miserable to work on that I said to myself, I'm not going to draw on my personal stuff again until I truly want to. It took that long, it took two years, okay? Now, those of you guys in high school, in college, you may not be able to do that because you have applications and stuff like that. But what I'm trying to say is that it's normal. That That's, that's what artists do. That really is just the lay of the land sometimes. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. And when I got back, I made this new body of work that actually ended up winning me an artist grant. So sometimes it's worth the wait. If you can hack it, I mean, not everybody can necessarily. It sort of depends on your personal situation, but it happens. It's, it's fine to take those breaks. I mean, when students talk to me, they're like, oh my God, I haven't drawn in two weeks. I'm like, you're fine. Don't worry about it. It's totally okay. We have a question from McKinsey. Working on my drawing final project, chose glass as part of the subject, never drawn glass. You know what? Try to see it abstractly. I think that's the important thing. If you start thinking about all of the objects as literal things, that gets very distracting. And I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name. Vachana Shri says, can you please give tips on how to hold brushes? Well, my first advice is do what works for you, okay? I'm gonna give you tips, but it's different for everybody, okay? So here's what I do. If I get a brush. If I want to, for example, like really do detail, I tend to hold it like a pencil because this is like a very tight grip and I'm able to really slowly massage the painting very, very carefully. But this beginning stage, you guys will see that oftentimes I'm holding it like this. Now this feels awkward for a lot of people because you're like, oh, I can't control it but this keeps me from trying to do this. And so in some ways, this is sort of like a physical limitation you give yourself. Like you are not gonna be as mobile and as careful when you paint like this. This is sort of like becoming a barbarian for a few minutes, but it's like in the beginning of the painting, you do have to paint like a barbarian. You do have to cover big areas and not get picky. And so I tend to start like this and then eventually I whittle down to this. Right now it's a little funky, again, because I'm not on an easel. I'm not doing this as much as I would like to, but this is more the grip that I do in the beginning of a painting. Let's see. Morning Atlas says, sometimes art feels like a chore, that when you have to take a step back and rest, I also took a two year break. It's fine, totally okay for you guys to do that. Karen says, I'm on a break now due to COVID and childcare, only taking really limited commissions. It's definitely guilt inducing. Well, we have you guys covered because we actually have a video under artist wellness called artist guilt because, oh my goodness, you guys, we have a lot of guilt as artists. This is not going away anytime soon. We did that stream and we were like, oh, there's all these things to talk about. And then after we did the stream, we we're like, dude, we need to do like another three streams because people brought up so many facets of artist guilt that we didn't, we were like, yeah, oh yeah, there is that and that. So it was very interesting. Okay, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on the rag and you know what we need? We need some more articulation down here. Again, not the part of the painting I'm the most excited about, but let's just try it for now. 
because I can't ignore it forever, right? So a lot of this is like putting it down and then getting rid of it. And that's okay for that to be the process. Okay, let me see right now, it still feels too mushy for me, but I think I do want to start to hint a little bit and maybe like just some dabbing with the rag. Because I think sometimes the thing about the rug is people feel like they need to like push it around all the time, but you don't. Sometimes just dabbing it almost like a sponge can be a really good way to do that. So I'm going to really pull out. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> I love these highlights. They're just like, ah, they feel really good when you put them in. Let me get in and maybe make this a little bit less. I think I went a little overboard in that area. But I want to really, at the very least, I want to leave this painting before it dries with a general feeling of light. I care more about light than I do about the shape of the oranges. I know that sounds weird, but I feel like the shape is fairly cosmetic. I mean, you, you can go in and fix it, but lighting, it's like if you're missing the lighting, you're like missing the whole thing. And so that's really why I'm like really focusing on that right now. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's do a little dabbing, maybe like lift up some of this stuff. Let's see what we can do. Like, I don't want to take out too much. Oh, this is becoming so messy guys. <laughs> By the way, who's painting with me and who's drawing? I mean, it's fine. You guys don't have to paint if you just have colored pencils, you can totally just do that. But I know some people are painting, which is awesome too. So whatever you guys have. All right, let's build this up. Oh, this feels so mushy. The other thing is I don't like working small. Sorry. I feel like I'm just complaining. I don't know. That's sort of a state of mind for a lot of us artists. That is, I don't know. We have so many problems. Like, <laughs> like you know, normal people think they have problems, but we artists... <laughs> It's just, everything is so dramatic. <laughs> I guess that's why I like teaching art. It's just, it's never a dull moment. It's everything so exciting all the time. All right, let's build up. Let's just really build up these blacks, okay? And you know what? I might regret doing this later because it's a little thicker than I would like it to be. But I need this as an anchor for this painting right now. So, yeah. Ugh, this does not feel good, guys. Ugh. Now I'm like really regretting this. You guys sure you want me to do these paint alongs? <laughs> like, they're uh they're they're gonna be challenging. Especially because painting is so slow. It's so slow compared to drawing. It's like, oh my god, the, the patience. This is why I'm not a painter, because I don't have a lot of patience. And I get frustrated with my work really fast when I'm painting. So tell me, guys, who here is patient? Because uh, there are some artists out there, and I'm just like, crap, I suck. <laughs> Actually, that orange got a little bit too small. I think I'm going to lift a little bit of this out. Yeah, let's make that a little bit wider. I think I killed that right now. I don't know. I sort of feel like I'm trying to tackle too many things all at once. I feel a little bit scatterbrained right now. I don't know. It could just be the whole thing. See, here's the thing, though. When I paint... I don't have high expectations because I've accepted that I'm just not that good of a painter compared to a lot of other people. But you know what? Okay. Tell me you guys, if you agree with this or not, sometimes I actually think it's frustrating to see somebody who's so good at what they do that it just feels untouchable. For example, I'm sure some of you guys have seen the tutorial, the pencil and pen, tutorial that Song Kang did for us. I mean, Song is just pen and ink goddess. She's incredible. But when I watched her do that tutorial, I was like, dude, this is a masterclass, okay? I feel like after watching her tutorial, sometimes I'm like, I don't even want to try because I can't do remotely as good of a job. And so maybe me not being good at this will help you learn more because it won't be as well, definitely will not be masterful. I can tell you that. But I just know that sometimes I look at people who are just so good that I just like can't even go there. So I don't know. Maybe this is the new way to teach. Get somebody who's not good at it 
And maybe you can see something by watching them struggle. I think sometimes that's part of it too. Sometimes I think some people are not good teachers because they're too good at it. It's like they don't, they can't understand like why anybody would not be able to do it in two seconds. And I'm like, because um, we're not good at it like you are. <laughs> All right, maybe more in here. I mean, on the other hand, I'm not saying it's not amazing to learn from somebody who's masterful and incredible. I'm just saying that there, there's different aspects and different ways of learning. Like I know some people just get intimidated really quickly. So yeah, that is definitely something that I've thought about. All right, let's do a little bit more work. Hmm. I don't know, like I really like some of the shape here, but I feel like I got a little bit too aggressive. Hmm. It's a bit hard to tell. Maybe I think I just need to go a little slower. And you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to do what I learned in my watercolor tutorial, which is that, okay. So you guys know John Singer Sargent. I hate that guy. Ugh. Hate that guy as in I'm super jealous. Not that I hate his work. But when I look at a John Singer Sargent painting, all I can think is that he went with all these brushes in like two seconds. And then I feel really crappy and it makes me feel like I have to paint like that. But you know what? I didn't do that with my watercolor tutorial. In fact, I slowed down. And actually that was the difference. When I slowed down with the watercolor, I was able to do much more, much better. So maybe I need to try that with oils. I don't know. Maybe that will help me get it to come across. Oh, shoot. I keep losing these highlights. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't done this technique with oils in a long time, so I'm not so sure this is the best comparison. I mean, what we can do is maybe build up on this painting and see where I take it. I might keep it monochrome, but I also might just use this as an underpainting. I mean, who knows? Let's just make it up as we go along. I think sometimes things are just more fun that way. Ooh, that's not fun. Did everybody see that? That's a little bit of dry brushing. Sorry, I know you can't see it very well because of the glare. i do the best I can maybe build up some of this. All right, this is feeling a little better. Not great, but I'm starting to kind of get a handle on this. Let me just get in this little bit on that leaf so it doesn't feel so flat like that. All right, let's see what people are saying in the chat. What is going on? MM says, honestly, I think you're struggling for technical reasons. Artisans is a lower quality product than their watercolors or conventional oil, and it's awful on panels. That could be part of it, but I also think that you just have to try it, and you can only blame your materials so much, I guess. And I think that you can learn from every single experience. So maybe there's a better brand, but this is the brand that I'm using and you gotta start somewhere. So we're just gonna try that. Let's see what people are saying. So Tainley says, seeing really talented people is inspiring. Sure, I compare myself to others, but it's positive to see someone that is really good. Well, that is a really healthy, positive attitude, So Tainley, that I have to admit, I can't always get behind because of my stupid, you know, artist jealousy issues, which by the way, we have a video on that too, where Eloise, Alex and I confess about all our jealous intentions. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Mike says, I think it's amazing to be able to do tutorials, talk about the process while actually doing it, make it up as you go along, love that. Cool, awesome. Abby is saying, how do you come up with what you want to paint? Well. I think I was trying to create references for our Flickr page, which has super high resolution photos that you guys can download for your own use. The link is in the video description below. And oftentimes it's just what I happen to be seeing. This particular time, I knew I wanted to do still life because even though I'm not like super big on still life, I have a very... <laughs> This is very silly. It's this very almost like nostalgic feel about oil painting in still life, okay? Because my whole oil painting history was a mess. But I had this phenomenal teacher, sophomore year at art school, Nick Palermo in the illustration department. And that guy totally fixed everything for me. He made everything make sense. 
And it was a couple things. It was that color chart that I talked about in last night's stream. It's the stream on red and green complementary colors. So you guys can watch that. So he did that with us and he had us paint so many still lives, which I know people say, oh, that's so boring. But you know what? I needed that. I needed something really simple that was not going to be challenging at all in any other way. And so for me, I have this association with my beginning skills in oil painting cementing themselves when I painted from still lives. Yes, at some point we will do portraits and all kinds of other things, but I do think for a lot of people, if you're just getting started with painting and you're not ultra confident, still life is just such a great way to simplify things. And if you pick things that you really do like, I mean, I really do like these mandarins. I ate three of them today. So it's like, I look at these and I find them plump and luscious looking, they're beautiful. So I like those. So I think the important thing you guys is that you just paint something that you like. And it can be something like mandarin oranges at Whole Foods that were probably overpriced. Like that's totally fine, you guys. Uh, sorry, I can't pronounce your name. It's Belavia. Have you ever tried acrylic? Personally, I haven't, but it seems like it dried so fast, isn't as rich, but other than that, I don't know much. Well, my personal preference is definitely oil. If you gave me a choice, I would pick oil. But I do think I have to give acrylic another chance because when I was in high school, I had the same thing. I hated how fast it dried. It was too frustrating for me. But then Alex Rowe shot an acrylic painting tutorial for us here at Art Prof. You guys can look it up on our YouTube channel. And he had all these really cool tricks, the slow dry medium, the matte medium, all these cool things that I did not know about when I was using acrylic. So I feel like if I had that slow dry medium, that would have been a huge game changer. So it's probably something that I need to just try again. Mr. Scooby is saying, what do you do with that paint water after finishing your painting? I mean, you dump it down the sink. That's pretty much it. So yeah, there's not really another option. I mean, I'm assuming it's safe because it is water soluble, but if you're using oils, you have to get hazardous waste to take it or usually towns have like a annual drop off or something like that. Like you can't pour Gamsol on the sink. It's totally hazardous. So make sure you don't do that. Okay, let's see. I had another question that I just lost. I mean, the great thing about all these people watching is so many comments, but unfortunately it's hard for me to navigate the chat sometimes. Um, Chris says, nice to see someone trying artisan oils, never used it. I'm still on acrylics because I'm afraid of the oily struggle. These are really slippery. And honestly, my takeaway from today's session, if I were to do this again, I probably would have done like a really thin wash, let it dry. Maybe I would have used fast drying medium so it would have dried faster and then come back. I'm gonna do a little bit more on this piece but not much because it's getting so slippery that I do need it to dry. And I'm the type of person, I have to have layers. Like I know a lot of people are really good at a la prima and a la prima is beautiful. And I see that, but I'm somebody, I really, really need layers. If I don't have layers, I feel totally out of control. And I know that when I do oil painting, I have to get like seven layers before I even begin to feel like I'm making any type of progress. So very important. Miriam is saying, how can I go from copying photos to actually drawing your own ideas and compositions? Well, the first start, you guys, what we did today. Okay, I gave you guys that reference photo, but as you can see, we did not copy it. We made thumbnail sketches from that reference. That is a great place to start because what I see oftentimes is people say, we'll post in the Discord, here's the reference photo I'm using, here's the artwork I'm making, okay? And that's actually very helpful for critique because then we can see, okay, what is your reference? What are you really working with? But Nine times out of 10, when people do that, they are copying the exact same composition as the reference photo. They're not really using it as a reference. So this painting you guys see here, it's just a piece of that reference photo. It's not the exact same verbatim composition. So if you start with that, that is really going to help you a lot. 
let's see what other people are saying about the painting process. Mike is saying, can you zoom out and let us see the whole composition? I can't right now because it's going to mess with my whole setup, but when we go into the Discord, I will take a photo so you guys can see the whole thing. So don't worry about that, okay? Let's see what people are saying. Jazz says, let the paint settle out in the water, dump out most of the water, let the rest of the water evaporate. Sticks to the, sorry, I think I'm getting a lot of typos in there. Okay, I'll look it up actually, because I haven't done this before, so I'm not totally sure. Okay, let's do a little bit more. I think just a couple of touch-ups, and I think I just need to work all this paint, there's like too much paint in my brush. The other thing is I feel like I need more brushes. My brushes are, if you guys, let me tell you, never move with 5 billion art supplies <laughs> because all day long, I'm like, where's my, oh, it's in some box. Yeah, so that definitely happens. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to try to slow down and get the values closer to where I want them to be they're not going to be precise, but I feel like I lost a lot of my midtones. So let's try this. Um, at the very least, I want to darken a couple areas that I think are a little bit too much. Um, oh, oh, you know what else? There's this cast shadow here. Does everybody see that? This is really pretty. The little cast shadow that is from this orange that's casting onto this one. So let me try that. Ooh, that's really fun. Okay, cool. So, uh, shoot. All right, let's try that. That's a little bit better. Okay, let's see. We need more down here. Because what I'm trying to do is just get like the essential volume. I don't need these oranges to have texture. I don't need them to look perfect and polished, but I do need to get the essence of the value, which in this case, it's pretty dark down here towards the bottom. Yeah. I don't know. See, here's the thing. I go back and forth about the paint drying thing, because I know some people hate that acrylics dry fast. Some people hate that oils take forever to dry. And yes, there's retarders that you can buy and slow dry medium and stuff like that. But I guess in the beginning of a painting, I, I do want it to dry faster. And then as I go further on, I don't mind if it takes longer. So maybe if I were to go through this again, I probably would use a lot of the slow dry medium, try to really push the drying process and then go from there. Because you know what? You're going to mess up <laughs> the first time you paint. That's just going to happen. And you have to realize that, okay, well, next time, let's try that. That that would be my takeaway from today's session is probably the way I'd go about doing it. Okay, let's try that. And I do want to bring this leaf back because I sort of lost some of this. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm looking and I'm squinting at this highlight and how this highlight's just a little bit lighter than that leaf. And I'm gonna pull that out because otherwise the leaf gets a little bit buried. So a lot of this is like, how does this look compared to this? How dark is the leaf compared to the orange? How dark is the carton compared to the leaf? Those are all things to be thinking about. Okay. I'm gonna lift a little more here because I feel like I lost the edge of that. And actually this is pretty smooth over here. So let me just take this and blend that out. And, oh, you know, I totally lost this too. There's this little corner down here, a pretty important negative space that we don't wanna lose. And I'm gonna pull out some of this as well. So yeah, I guess now just subdividing and getting into some of the less like super obvious values. I mean, I can't help myself. I just love dark stuff. I love strong highlights. It's just so fun. Like what's not to like about all that? Okay, let's build that up. And 
Yeah, actually, I didn't realize there's this like separation because I think there's an orange like underneath this one. So I'm going to bulk that up and then maybe actually pull out some in here like that. Oh, crap, but then I just lost my shadow. Ugh. I think, okay, this is what I need. I need to show like a, ugh, crap. Okay, that was a bad move. Maybe that brush really is too big right now. <laughs> But I'm sticking with it because I think if I go to the little one, I'm going to get really picky. I just, I just know it. That's so in my nature to do that. Yeah, let's do another pass of some darks because it would be nice to be able to reference that later on when I come back to the piece. Yeah, I'm not sure. This might just be an underpainting. It might not be. I mean, I'm not usually somebody that does a ton of underpaintings. Like Alex Rowe is really into his underpaintings. I'm not that into it but um it might be something that i try i'm not sure this is all bit one gigantic experiment guys none of this is remotely for sure okay yeah maybe a little bit less there let's block that in. yeah i feel like this whole area got a little bit too dark all right let's see what people are in the chat saying let's see Mike is saying, that was so cool how you brought the leaf out in a few strokes. Do you ever stray from reference photos to make certain objects lighter or darker to suit composition? All the time. <laughs> That's pretty much all I do. I mean, you guys, I cannot tell you. If I had a dollar for everybody on YouTube in the comments who says to me, you missed two millimeters of the nose and your eyes should be, I'm like, I don't care. I really don't care. I mean, I think people just have very different ideas of what a reference photo is for. Like for me, a reference photo is a starting point. It's like raw flour or raw eggs, but I'm not going to keep it that way. I'm going to manipulate it and change it really dramatically. And that for me is what's fun about the whole thing. I mean, I know people have different goals. Some people really want it to be very accurate. I'm not really interested in that. I'm more interested in something that's a bit more of an interpretation. So I think that would be more fun. WC is saying you ever get so mad that you rip up a piece of artwork when you're working on it. Nope, never. You know why? Not because I never get mad because, oh, trust me, I do that all the time <laughs> when I'm working on my pieces. But I find that number one, we are not good judges of our work, our own work, because every time we look at our work, it's totally biased. And also, I really need distance. That's why I'm going to break this up into two or three streams, because I just can't do it all in one sitting. But I need that time to step away. So oftentimes, I'll work on a drawing, think it's horrible, put it away. Week later, I take it out. I'm like, that wasn't so bad. Other times it's different where <laughs> you're like, you guys ever have a studio session where you're like, oh man, I, I did such a great job. I'm so excited. And then you take out the work, you're like, it's not very good. <laughs> so that's the thing is I think in the moment, like right now, I am not a good judge of this painting. I need to put it away for a week or two, not look at it. And then when I come back, then I'm going to trust my judgment a lot better. So I just think it's not a good idea to do that because uh, you can't take that back. Like once you tear up your drawing, that's it. And I do think you learn from everything. So I would not do that unless you, I mean, do it if you have to, but I think it's better to let things sit around a little bit more. Maria saying reference is an aid, not a rule. I use baby photos to draw puppy dragons it helps in figuring out, quote, newborn proportions. See, I love that. That's phenomenal. What a great reference. I think that's really terrific. And Losado says, even if your intro being accurate, sometimes, oh, even if you're into being accurate, sometimes it really looks wrong. So you have to fix it to make it look right. Yep. Sometimes you can copy something precisely and it can look nothing like them. We talk a lot about that actually in our cat drawing tutorial, the one that Lauren and I did, that sometimes people will do a photorealistic colored pencil drawing of somebody's pet from a photo, and it technically is accurate because it looks just like the photo, but it doesn't feel like the pet. It doesn't have the personality of the pet. And so actually I am a bigger fan 
of drawings that are less accurate, but that really feel like that cat. Because cats are so different. They have such personalities. Lauren's cat, Tor, is a total diva. And I wanted to show that, but we didn't do it by precisely copying every single millimeter. That's what I think is more helpful. So Itainley says, I remember working on a large piece. My teacher wanted me to enter in a show. After working for weeks, I realized I didn't like the composition and tossed it into the dumpster. My teacher was furious. Sorry, you got to side with your teacher here. That that bummed me out really bad. <laughs> if, I, if you were my student, you did that, that would bum me out. I understand the frustration, but guys, hold on to it because you don't know. You might come back to it. I worked on these drawings a couple of months back that I hadn't touched in eight years. And I didn't think they were that great at the time, but I had a lot of fun working on that, you guys. So yeah, keep it around because you really, really don't know. You guys, I will be hanging out in the Art Prof Discord in the Art Alongs channel. The Discord invite is in the YouTube video description. So I would love for you guys to post if you drew anything, if you painted anything, we can chat more about all this stuff subscribe to our YouTube channel and join the Art Prof family. And I wanna say a big thank you to our top Patreon supporters who make everything possible for us to keep Art Prof up and running to make sure that all of our content is always 100% free and accessible. Thank you to everybody for drawing and painting with me for all your contributions. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.